Hello world, Health Programmer one here. A few days ago I did a video talking about the Open Pleb initiative, which is an initiative by Level 1 Techs and Gamers Nexus to try to get companies to open up on their documentation for proprietary hardware and software interfaces. Uh, one of the main focuses of this, at, at least at the moment, is the RGB protocols and the RGB standards. And I made a video talking about why this would be beneficial to open RGB, how we do a bunch of reverse engineering to try to support various RGB devices in open RGB, and that if the companies would just provide documentation for how to talk to these devices, none of that reverse engineering work would be necessary. We could just jump straight to writing the code. It would make our lives easier. Um, so... Uh, as kind of a follow-up to that and as something I've kind of been meaning to do for a while and haven't gotten around to, I wanted to make a video documenting the actual reverse engineering process. And as it so happens, I just got this today, the Asus ROG Ally. So I want to reverse engineer that today and I'm going to do that on this video. So I've went ahead and got the Ally set up I've installed some software on it that we're going to use for reverse engineering, namely Wireshark. Uh, also, the development environment for OpenRGB. And then I've got it connected to this uh, USB dock, which is actually a Steam Deck dock. And it's powering the Ally, and I have HDMI out connected to my capture card on my PC. And that is being shown on the TV behind me, as well as... I can switch over to it whenever we're taking a closer look at what's on the screen. So I'm going to go through the process of reverse engineering this device. So the first question I have uh, with any new device is what interface does the RGB communicate over? Now, a lot of times this is fairly self-explanatory. A keyboard it connects over USB. It has to be USB. Same with a mouse or a mouse mat or, uh, you know, even this microphone. And pretty much everything is going to be some form of USB that connects externally. Um, and now the protocols used by H uh, USB might be different. There's USB Human Interface Device or HID. So I'm going to go ahead and open Wireshark. And now <clears throat> we've installed Wireshark and we've installed it with USB PCAP support, which is something you'll have to check whenever you install it, is that you make sure you install USB PCAP. And that allows you to capture USB packets. So the first thing we need to do is figure out where these lights are on the device. Now, being that this is a full system, um, being that this is a full computer and not just a keyboard, a mouse, a controller, a microphone, or whatever, it's theoretically possible that the lights could be on something other than USB. But based on what I've seen of the interior of this and of how the Steam Deck is designed, and since this seems to be kind of built to a similar design as the Steam Deck, I'm pretty certain that they're using USB for the RGB in here. Plus, it's ASUS, and on a lot of other ASUS peripherals, uh, kind of work the same way. But ASUS has, in the past, made laptops where the keyboard was not controlled over USB. It was controlled over WMI. Um, and on some motherboards, they've made it where the onboard motherboard lights have been controlled over I2C. So anything's possible. But I'm going to start by looking at USB, because I think it is going to be the most top most likely of the interfaces so the first thing we're going to do actually is while i've opened wireshark and that's important there's another tool that i like to use called zadig and it's a fairly simple little utility that lets us view all of the um, usb devices attached to a system so we're going to go to zadig and we're going to options and list all devices and now all the devices present on the system are showing up under this dropdown. Now, I already can tell you that there's probably going to be multiple USB interfaces on the 
ROG Ally because, again, it's a full PC. And how USB works is you pretty much always have at least one root hub, which is kind of your top level hub. And then you can attach more hubs underneath the root level hub and all the devices attached to those hubs are sharing the bandwidth of that one root hub. And so there's probably going to be at least two root hubs on the uh, ROG Ally. You have the USB type C port here, which is what the dock is connected to. And that almost certainly is its own root hub. And then you're going to have another root hub, at least one, for all the devices inside the system, which is going to be the game controller, possibly the lighting, depending on whether the game controller and the lighting are the same device or two different devices. Um, possibly the touchscreen. I'm not for sure on that one. Uh, maybe um, like some of the wireless interfaces or something. Could be USB, but for sure, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a controller on USB. That's how it is on the Steam Deck. So this is the first one that looks interesting. Asus Tech Computer Inc. Interface uh, 1 and 2 and USB input device. So this USB input device is 0B051ABE. And then these are also 0B051ABE. So these three make up one device, uh, USB input device, Asus Tech Computer Inc. This one is would be my guess as to where the lights are uh, because it is marked as Asus and it has Asus's uh, vendor ID. Um, so all of the other Asus USB devices that we support in OpenRGB like um, Asus keyboards, mice, um, I think there's like a headset stand. That there's this uh, Asus mouse mat I'm using here. I think all of these devices have that same, uh, what is it, 0B05 um, product ID. Um, we've got BT Function. This is looks like a Bluetooth controller um, by Foxconn. Um, that sounds reasonable, a Bluetooth controller. The USB receiver, I think this is that Logitech. Yeah, it just got multiple interfaces. Uh, then we have a controller, Xbox 360 for Windows. And that has the Microsoft vendor ID. That's weird. So I think it seems like they've actually like integrated the controller that's built into the Ally is acting like an Xbox 360 controller. I mean, that makes sense. That's a con controller that's supported for PC gaming, and it matches up with all the controls they have. So maybe the lights and the controller are actually separate devices that are maybe both on either the, either on the same PCB or like two virtual devices exposed by one chip, or it could be two completely different things internally. I'm not sure, but it looks like the controller is its own thing. Uh, and then we have a USB video adapter. I'm thinking that is the USB dock uh, controller. That looks like another interface of the Microsoft Xbox 360 because it has XUSB, which I think is an Xbox related driver. And then we have Uh, light Tuning Technology Inc. I have no idea what that is. ETU905A. Yeah, I've, I have no idea what that is. So now that we have that information, let's go ahead into Wireshark and look to see. So we've got four USB PCAP interfaces. And as I talked about the root hubs earlier, basically you usually end up with one USB PCAP interface on Wireshark per USB root hub. But in a lot of systems, I've noticed that not always, not every root hub is actually used. And so you have uh, root hubs that come up empty with no devices attached. So we need to look through all of the USB PCAP uh, interfaces to find where the device is that we want to capture from. So we'll start with one. 
And I've actually already gone through and looked at these a little bit. And I think this is the one that we want. This is going to be that Asus Tech uh, controller, that input device that I think is going to be the lights. We also, on that same root hub, have the Xbox 360 controller for Windows here, which is going to be our, our gamepad. We have a USB composite device. That is our Bluetooth adapter. Uh, we saw that earlier, the Bluetooth uh, controller there. And it looks like that last thing was a fingerprint sensor, uh, Aegis Tech Touch fingerprint sensor. So we don't actually need to talk to any of those devices. The only one we want to listen from is this one, which I think is going to be our Asus Ara RGB controller. And then uh, we don't want to capture from all devices connected, and we don't want to capture from newly connected devices. We only care about um, the devices that are already connected, which is this one. So we're going to go ahead and save that. But then let's also take a look at the other USB PCAP interfaces just to make sure that we're not missing something. So USB PCAP 2 says it has no devices detected. Um, so yeah, no devices detected. 3 has um, gigabit ethernet controller so that would be on the dock so that is the usb type c root hub uh, we don't care about that one and then four is also empty so it looks like one is the one that we want so let's just double check we've selected just the device we're interested in not the bluetooth adapter the xbox controller or the fingerprint sensor and we're just gonna save and now we can open this up and it starts capturing. So because right now we have a static mode selected, it's not actually sending any data. But if we look, the most recent time is 4.8 seconds uh, for that packet. And now let's go over to it's called Armory Crate. And we can go ahead and select a color and then we can pick a different color. So it's selected to blue right now. It kind of looks green on the TV, but it's blue. We'll pick red. And as you can see, the uh, sticks change to red. And now we can go back out. And we notice that we've received a bunch of new packets. So we were at four seconds is where we started. But now there's a whole bunch of new packets. Uh, so this should be the correct device. But we've got some set idle USB interrupt in. So we're looking for a USB interrupt out uh, from the host to the device. Uh, that's going to be actually the host, which is the motherboard sending a data to the LED controller. Uh, we don't care about get descriptors. Okay, so here's one that I think is going to actually be data because this is a host to destination, the destination being the RGB controller or the USB device we think is the RGB controller. And then it's protocol USB HID, which is the human interface device protocol, very common for LED control. Length is 100, but there's a bunch of header data that gets counted into that 100. The actual length is shown down here, which is 64. And that represents the data fragment, which is the part that's highlighted. So 64 is a very common size for uh, USB report data. So this is a type set report, which is called a feature report. So there's two different uh, USB HID uh, kind of communication functions. There's set feature report and then HID write. And they work in two slightly different ways. But so one part of reverse engineering is figuring out which type of USB packet is being used uh, when you're dealing with HID. And this one, it looks like it's a, a report, a feature report. 
So I need to know that, that it's a feature report. Size is 64, which is pretty standard. And then we have some data. So it looks like there's some other stuff. And every time you send data, then there's also some like responses involved. Uh, it looks like there might be some other stuff going on with those descriptors that we probably don't care about because we're purely looking at what the format of this packet that we send is. So we can actually apply a filter on the length equals 100. And that will just filter out everything that we know we don't care about. And we're just looking at these um, packets that are actually sending a report to the controller. And now what we want to do is we know that we've set the value to 25500 or in hexadecimal that's ff0000 so if the packets are in or if the bytes are in red then green then blue format we should have ff0000 in the data but it's not always common that it's it's not always the case that it is rgb sometimes it's grb or brg or you can reorder the bytes um, some protocols do that so really, we're looking for two zero zeros and one FF. So let's go back to Wireshark and let's just go through the packets and see if we can find one that has FF and zero zero. So I'm just going to start looking through them. And I don't know that there's a, an automated search way to do this. I usually just look through them manually. And it looks like this has been particularly chatty. There's a lot of data here. And this this is why the idea of documentation is important because sometimes you have a device like this where I, I, all I did was I changed the color from green to red. That's changing one byte from FF to 00, zero and another byte from 00, zero to FF. That's all I did. And it sends like 30 something reports and probably one of these reports is actually going to contain the color data and the others are doing some other things like setting it into the correct mode or saving it to the internal memory or something like that. And, and we don't know what any of those packets do. And that's where documentation is important. But for now, we're going to just try and ignore the packets that we don't understand and look for the ones we do. Um, so we're just going to look for FF00, and I think this is probably it, because we have a 5AB300, and then we have 00FF00, so that could be, it could be four bytes of header, like 5AB30000 is like some kind of header, and then we have red, green, blue, or it could be like 5AB3, and then we have like, um green blue red because red is ff in this case or it could be like green red blue uh, and have that be the red be in the middle we don't know for sure uh, but we know that this is 5a and b3 so if we go down here and we change it to uh, say green and now let's look for 5a b3 again um, after this point. Okay, 5AB3. And we went from 5AB3000 FF. FF was in this position before. Now it's moved to this position. So I'm guessing this is red, green, blue. But we can um, try to confirm that again by setting it to blue this time. And let's go try to find um, 5AB3 again. Or yeah, was it B3 or D3? I don't remember. 5AB3, yeah. So we have 5AB3000000000 FF. So these are our three bytes here. We have red, green, and blue. So I'm going to go ahead and make a note of this. I'm going to say uh, 5A B3 0000 RRGGBB.
So this is like static color. Uh, so we know that one packet. So we've got that uh, documented. Now we're going to uh, try and figure out maybe some other packets and see what they do. Um, so another one would be the mode. So it has like all these different modes for different effects. So uh, we can cancel out of that. So we've got that was static. And now we have breathing. And we have strobing, color cycle, rainbow, and RSync is going to be direct mode, which is a special case that's for software driven effects. So now let's go ahead and set um, breathing mode, which we already did actually, because now the sticks are actually breathing. Um, so you can kind of see they are kind of fading in and out. It looks like it's actually breathing with a random color scheme because they just keep alternating colors. Or no, it's actually alternating between two colors. So we have blue and purple here. So let's go ahead and put uh, green. And I picked green because it's a 0, 0, FF, 0, 0. So it's just, um, it's one of the primary colors when they're easy to spot in the data. So we've got breathing with uh, blue and green. So let's go back. Well, let's scroll to the end of the data and try and go up. So I'm not sure what this is. So we've got 5AD1 uh, repeated several times here. And then we've got... um let's see so where's the start of that we can look at the time here we've got 571 so it seems to start with 5 ad 1010103 so let's just try and document this list so so we start with 5 ad 1010103 and then we go to uh, the next one. So that was our 010103. We've got 5A, D1, O, A, O, 1. And the rest is all zeros, so we're not going to write out the zeros. Um, okay, so this one's getting a little complicated because we've got quite a bit going on in this. We've got some extra data here. Um, so this one would get tricky to write out. Maybe we should write it out, but 5A, D1, O2, O1, 2C, O2. So some of this could be like mode data, like mode IDs, speed, direction. Um, and then we have the 5A, D1, OA, O1 again, which we had just before it. So 5AD1 OA01, 5AD1 O2 O1, and then we have 5AD1 O2 O2. Uh, so we have 5AD1 OA01 repeated a lot. That might be some kind of like apply command. And then we have 5AD10203. Every other packet seems to be 5AD10801. That has to be some sort of apply. So 5AD10201. So I'm just going to put the first four uh, bytes in the data and try and write out the stream. So 5AD10101, 5AD10801, 5AD10201, and then we have 5AD10801 again, and then, so as you can tell, every it seems like every other frame 
is 5a d1 oa01 so it seems like it's some sort of apply command so like it sets this and then it says apply it sets this apply it set this apply it set this apply it that's that would be my first guess or it's some sort of like end of frame marker so you start a command and you say i'm done with that command i'm ready to start the next one send a command i'm done send a command i'm done that that would be my first guess as to what this packet does so i've done and then this one o2 so this seems to be like a command this third byte so we've, we've got like this seems to like start it this seems to like end the frame Two seems to be some kind of actual configuration because each O2 has extra bytes that are non-zero. Uh, OA, okay, that's just the apply again. And then the O2 also seems to have multiple pages because it has like one, two, three. Let's see what the next one is if it if it's four. Um, so I did five A D one O two O three, and then of course we've got our OA O one again. Uh, which we expected. Uh, it's 5AD1 OA01. What's next is yeah, 0204. And then OA01. A01. And then 0205. Uh, and then OA01 again. 5AD1 0206. So we keep going. There's at least six pages of 02 here. So just to see what I'm writing down. So we still have this, and uh, I might have, what happens after 03? Did I double 03, 08, 01? Yeah, I, I missed, I double typed that. So we have this here, which is every other frame. But then we can look at the other frames, and so far we've got 02 for all of them. And then we go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm guessing this is some kind of like configuration page is being set for multiple different configurations. It could be actually setting all of the parameters for all the modes. Um, so like it could be like static, rainbow, breathing, whatever, and you're setting the speed and brightness and direction for every single one every single time. I've seen devices do that. That could be what this is. It could be the mode ID, but it could be something else. Because that's that B301 that we talked about that could be our RGB values. Okay. And then if we go back to the last break in time here is 1853. 01, 01, 01. 201, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then B3, O1, O1. B3, I think, is the set color. But then we have some extra stuff in here, because we know that it was... So I've got green and blue selected. So O O O O F F is blue. And then O O F F O O is green. So E B 0001 might be something else. And then there's a 01 here. Because um, before we had, this was for static, we had 5 A B 3 O O O O R R G G B B. But then now we have. Like that, maybe? This is for um, breathing, which takes two colors. Let's change them. Let's put uh, red and... Well, let's just do red and red. Just so that we have... Uh... So here's that again. So we have 5AB3001. FF0000, and then we have three unknowns. Uh, let's see, so we've got 
RGB. Don't know, don't know, don't know. RGB. So yeah, that's this. So 5AB3. This one was a 1 here, so that's going to be an actual field. Uh, and then we have RRGGBB for the first color. We have three unknowns, and then we have RRGGBB for the second color. Um, let's go back to here. So we've got speed, and we've got brightness. Those could be parameters that are the extra field. So let's turn speed to slowest and see what happens. Uh, we're looking for D3 or B3. Oh, where's B for me? Okay. So we've got 5AB3001. So we have E10001. So let's, for the middle three, we have E10001. So let's change the speed. Oh, I didn't show that. Um, we have E10001 uh, here for those three. Now we're going to change the speed. And go look at the packet again. Looking for, let's go all the way down. We're looking for 5AB3. Okay, so something did change. Because uh, now we have F5001. So E1 changed to F5. So that means this is speed. This field is. Okay. So this one was 01. Um, let's see. So I have this field is non-zero. And this field is non-zero. Uh, this one is speed. This is RGB for first color, RGB for second color. We don't know what uh, these two are yet, or this one. So let's go ahead and change brightness, which is 100. Let's put it at zero. No, okay. It hasn't, it's not sending a 5AB3 anymore. So it must only send that when something actually changes. So if 5AB3 was color and speed, let's try uh, static. That should send a 5AB3. It does. I'm, I'm guessing this field might be the mode. Uh, zero for um, static, one for breathing, zero, one, so stroking should be two. So did it send a 5AB3? Oh, well, yeah, it did. This, this, this is going to be the mode, because this is the color. It's strobing with blue, which is zero, 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 FF. This is our mode field. This This one is M for mode and O static one breathing A is whatever this one's called. 
uh, strobing. So let's try another mode, uh, color cycle. Now this mode doesn't have uh, color settings because it just cycles through the colors. We call this spectrum cycle in OpenRGB. Um, let's look for 5AB3 again. Uh, we have, yeah, so it didn't put in any colors. It's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, but the speed does can be changed on this one, so there is a speed value. Uh, that mode is O2. What do they call it? Color cycle? Yeah. Okay. So let's try rainbow. Uh, this one is like a rainbow wave across the four LEDs. I guess I should be demonstrating them if you want to see what they do. Um, it might be too bright for the camera to pick it up. It's basically a wave going across the LEDs. Um, so let's go back to here and look for 5AB3 again. Uh, O3 in the modes field, and we have a speed. This was a uh, rainbow wave, I believe it was called, or just called rainbow. And then we have RSync, which is a bit, essentially our direct mode. Uh, if we do that, goes to applying and now if we tab out we should see just a continuous stream of packets which is what we see um let's stop that um and scroll up to the start of this mess so we can use the time to see when that started so 41 was kind of the first one so this is, looks like our direct mode format um 5A, so let's see, so our direct mode format is 5A, D1, O, 8, O, C. Seems to be the uh, format of that. 5A, D1, O, 8, O, C. That was our old B3, because that uh, 3 is rainbow. So no, we didn't need a B3 in order to enter direct mode. We just started sending out packets. Uh, that happened. Yeah, 5A, D1, 8 C. Then we had a 5A, B, C. I'm not sure what that one does. And we went back to our 8 Cs. And we had some strangeness here. Now that was the same sequence. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that could have been sent when we tabbed out. I'm not sure what the purpose of that is. It goes through that whole sequence whenever you tab out. Oh, you know what, though? That this device, it could be, it could be that the uh, the controller, the Ara controller, the ASUS device, I guess I should say, that ASUS USB device, it's not just for the LEDs, it's for the, it could be for the entire controller, or at least some of these extra buttons that are on the screen. So if, if the controller really is an Xbox 360 controller, an Xbox 360 controller has start and select, uh, and it has an Xbox home button. But an Xbox 360 controller does not have two extra buttons. And this controller clearly does. 
So if this was just one-to-one -one map to an Xbox 360 controller, you have D-pad, analog sticks, four face buttons, triggers, and then you would have start, select, and Xbox. But this has at least one more button. So it could be that maybe either just these two buttons, or maybe just this one button, or some combination thereof, or maybe the, the whole controller is uh, like dynamically remapped. So it could be that those other packets are like setting up the controller and have nothing to do with the RGB. Uh, maybe we can just ignore them. So let's tr let's do that. Let's just ignore those other packets. Um, so I, I think if we if we take that as our current theory, then the we can probably ignore anything that's the five AD one. The D1, uh, like 5AB could be uh, RGB. Or, well, I guess D1 for direct mode. Um, no. It could be that the that this sequence doesn't matter. Now, I think I'll start writing the code saying this doesn't matter. And we'll go from there. So I think the first step is let's try and implement this direct mode. Okay, so I've gone through and created all the template code for the ROG Ally controller and RGB controller classes in OpenRGB. And this is basically to give me a framework to allow me to send packets to the RGB controller and try to control it myself. So I've got the code pulled up over here on the ally itself uh, that I've written and I did some tests off camera but I want to show kind of where I am right now. So I've written a controller and basically in OpenRGB that means a controller class as well as an RGB controller class. Um, and I've added this in the folder with a lot of the other ASUS controllers. And so the RGB controller is sort of like a standard API. And the actual controller class can do whatever it needs to do for your given device. And then the RGB controller class kind of is a wrapper around it to put it into a standard API format that OpenRGB uses to sort of standardized RGB control. So the controller class, uh, we basically in the constructor, we just save off the HID device, which I'm using HID API, which is a, an open source library for communicating with USB HID devices. Uh, and then we do some basic setup, not a whole lot going on here. The real important one is I have this function called update LEDs and it gets called whenever you click uh, the button on OpenRGB to change the color. It passes in a list of the colors uh, which are stored in this vector. Uh, there are four colors total because there's four LEDs on this device. Right now I'm not doing anything with them. Uh, basically I'm creating a USB buffer and it really only needs to be 64 bytes in size. Uh, sometimes with HID API, you have to add one extra byte from what the packet size is uh, for the first byte, which is called the report ID. But it looks like what Wireshark was reporting actually already has that taken into account. So we're going to get rid of that first byte. And we're just going to go with uh, 0 is the 5A that we talked about earlier, D1, O8, OC, our bytes 0, 1, 2, and 3 in our buffer. And this should be the packet for direct mode. Then I'm going to leave the rest of the packet 0. So I actually zero it out up here in this mem set call. This sets the whole buffer, all 64 bytes, to 0. And then I change the first 4 bytes to match what we captured earlier. And then I was experimenting with sending colors, but I didn't get that to work, so that's coming it out for now. And then at the end, we send the feature report. And remember, I talked about the different types of HID packets. This one's called a feature report. 
So we're using this HID send feature report function. We're going to give it the device, which is our pointer to a structure that represents the USB device connection. Then the USB buffer itself, which is our 64 bytes of data. And then we need the size, which is 64, or we can do size of USB buff. That works as well. Maybe a little bit cleaner. So then I'm going to go over to Qt Creator, where I've got the same code pulled up. I just like using VS Code as the editor. I'm going to have the 2019 MSVC compiler selected for a release build. We're going to build this, and I've already compiled it, so this should just be a minor change. Uh, okay, there it's done building. And we can see that there uh, have been some things going on in the background here with uh, the USB capture. Uh, I still, I do have Armory Crate still open, but I have it set to a static blue color right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click Run, which will open up OpenRGB, and we should see some descriptors and stuff come out um, when it starts running. Uh, yeah, it's going to request a whole bunch of stuff. And then what we see is we have all of our ROG Ally devices. Now, we see we have a whole bunch of ROG Allies. We also have this RGB docking station. That's the USB hub I'm using. Ignore that one. But we have a whole bunch of ROG Allies. And the reason is in the detector... This is where we register the functions that are called to detect the, and basically detect based on the USB IDs call our detect function, which creates all of our classes that represent our devices. Uh, so this is basically whenever OpenRGB starts up, it goes through every USB device in the system, tries to find a match for the VID and PID, which are the values we found in Zadig earlier. Uh, so I've already found this. The USB VID is OB05. That's common to all ASUS devices. And then the Allies PID is 1ABE. So it's going to match any device that has those two uh, IDs and call this detect ROG ally function. What that's going to do is open the USB device and then if the open call succeeded, which means that the device is available, it's going to create a ROG Ally controller, which is our low-level like driver that talks to the hardware. And then it's going to create an RGB controller, ASUS ROG Ally, which is our wrapper class that uh, wraps our lower-level class into the common RGB controller API that allows it to be kind of standardized. And then it sets the name, and then it registers it so that it gets added into the list of devices. And that list shows up over here. So what? why are there, oh, however many, one, two, three, four, five, six ROG allies showing up? Well, that's because when we uh, looked at it earlier, there were multiple interfaces. And sometimes interfaces can even be broken down further. So we added this get hardware IDs to OpenRGB, and it'll show all of the different devices that get detected. And so we can see here we have uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, at least five devices that match. So we have the PID over here, OBO5, 1ABE, OBO5, 1ABE, here, here, and here. There might be one more that's not... Yeah, there's this one as well. So that's why we have six devices showing up, because there are actually six devices detected that use this um, ID, even though they're all kind of just parts of the same device. So we need to figure out which one is actually controlling the lights. So to do that, what I've done is I have all six of these. 
And I know that if I try to send a direct mode packet, what should happen with all the bytes zeroed out is that the light should just turn off. So we can, uh, I'm just going to turn the camera or the ally around so you can see it. And then we're going to, um, while I look at the TV in the camera view behind me to uh, move the mouse around. Let's see. That's a little delayed. So we're going to go pick this first one. And then we're going to try and change the color. Doesn't matter which color because it's not actually setting the color. It's just going to set it to black. It's going to set all the colors to zero. But the hope, the idea is hopefully it'll turn off the LED. So right now they're blue uh, because they were set from the Armory Crate software. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. So click and nothing happened. So now we can go back to the second one. Try that again. We'll just click any color. Uh, where's my mouse? There it is. So we're going to click. Nothing happened. Let's go to the third one. And I will go over here and click. Nothing happened. Fourth one. Click. Nothing happened. Uh, fifth one. Nothing happened. And the last one. Hopefully this is it because none of the others did anything. And look at that, the lights turned off. So the very last interface, the very last device showing in the list, that's the one we want. Uh, so let's, uh, I'm gonna flip this back around so I can see what I'm doing. And we're going to go back and look at those hardware IDs. Uh, get hardware IDs and make this big. Uh, there we go. So we've got, uh, this one, two, three, four, five, six down at the bottom. So I'm guessing this is the one that is, uh, the one we want. So it has, I is interface. So interface two, uh, U is usage, uh, that's 0076 in hex. And then P, which is a uh, usage page, this FF31. So if we go in here and then we go to detect, we're going to go down here and change this from a detector that's just a regular HID detector to an IPU. That's interface page usage. And that one takes some extra arguments at the end. So interface was two, page is FF31, and usage is 0076. So let's close this out. Uh, let's completely close that out and rebuild. And I'm going to go into uh, Armory Crate and pick static again with a new color. Let's go yellow. Uh, with blue. Okay, there it goes. That way we have a light that we can turn off again. So let's load that back up. And okay, there it goes. So now, as you can see, we only have one ROG Ally device. 
So I'm going to put this back to the camera, and I'm going to put my cursor over... Uh, where is my cursor? There it is. We'll put it over a color. So as you can see, now it's running. So I'm just going to go ahead and click. And as you can see, the lights went off. So I found our correct uh, usage, usage page, and interface for the uh, detector call because now we've filtered out all those ones that didn't actually do anything. So that's just basically the first step in being able to get communication to the correct device. Now we actually need to figure out how to send what we're actually supposed to send, which is four LED colors, R, G, and B for four LEDs. So for that, uh, we need to go back and reverse engineer a bit more and do some more packet captures, uh, this time of the direct mode. So let's go back to, so we're done with OpenRGB for now. Um, let's minimize that and that. So I've still got this uh, Wireshark open. That's good. Now we need to put it into direct mode. And direct mode is Aura Sync. So we put it into Aura Sync, and now the Aura background service is controlling the lights in real time. Now we need to figure out how to actually change the mode that Aura Sync is using. I think that's under Aura effects here. Uh, these should be the synchronized effects. So let's pick a static effect and let's pick, uh, let's pick red. That's good. So now it's in, and now it's all red, but it's all red using direct mode. And what that means is it should still be continuously sending data, which it looks like it is, or maybe it isn't. Uh, maybe it only sends data whenever it changes the pattern, which since it's static, it's not changing. But now we can look for the pattern that we know, which is, well, it's filter on the 100. And then we can look for, uh, what was that? That was um, direct mode format, 5A, D1, 08, OC. So look for 5, 8, D, 1, O, A, O, C. Or O, 8, O, C, I mean, not O, A. So here it is. You can see some packets where it was sending that. So it might actually be that simple. So 5, A, D, 1, O, 8, O, C. And then we have F, F, O, 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 F, F, O, 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 F, F, O, O, O. FFO. Oh, so it looks like it is just putting the four RGB values in series right after that header. And that's easy. And I think that's what I actually implemented here and uh, didn't really play with it much. Let's turn this back on. Uh, I don't have my keybind set up. So uh, edit toggle line comment. Okay. Uh, hope it's messed up the spacing. Okay. So what this code does is it loops through, uh, the color index loops through all the colors in the vector. The vector should be of size four. Uh, and then for each one, it takes the color index, multiplies it by three and adds zero, one, and two. Uh, oh, I forgot. I, I need to make this, uh, need to apply this offset. So zero, one, two, three. So this should actually start at four, five, and six. So it goes four, five, six, and then this becomes one. And so it's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And it gets the red for the first byte, the green for the second byte, and the blue for the third byte uh, for all four colors. Um, so that should allow us to control the color in direct mode. So hopefully when I run this, I'll be able to control the LEDs, although I need to desync this so that OpenRGB can actually control it. 
So we're going to turn that off. Uh, it goes back to yellow, which is our static color that's not being controlled by OpenRGB. So let's pick the ROG ally here, and I'm going to move my cursor over the red and spin it around to face the camera. And Okay. So as we can see now, we have yellow, uh, which is the setting, the static mode that it's set to in Armory Crate. OpenRGB is up. So let's, I uh, move my cursor. Uh, let's go ahead and pick red. And this should set all the LEDs to red. They're red. Now they should be yellow, green. Uh, it's hard to tell, but yeah, they are green. It's kind of washing out the camera. Let's do cyan. Yeah, that's right, blue. Yeah, they're blue, magenta, yep. So it looks like they're working, um, and we should be able to also change the individual LEDs. Uh, I messed up here. The second one should be called right stick, but they are still um, two different LEDs. So I should be able to set like just the red, uh, which should, this should just be this first LED on this side. Yep. And now I can make this one say blue for like a blue red gradient. Uh, yep. So that's blue and red on this one. Uh, we can do the same thing on the other side. Uh, let's say we want like, I don't know, green on this side. So this one's green. And this one is, say, red. And that is red. So it looks like we have direct control working. Uh, all, from all of that mess, we only needed to reverse engineer one packet. And if you send that packet, it just sets it to whatever colors you put in the packet. So that's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, we had to dig through quite a bit to figure that out. but. Um, yeah, so I think that's enough for this video. I may, might make another video continuing on with reverse engineering all the modes and seeing if that packet that we reverse engineered that was the mode packet actually works. But I think that's good for this one. Uh, we've proven that we can talk to it and control some LEDs. So thanks for watching.